some Jaden Rashad to talk first. You spoke with Connor from Sports Illustrated, who we had on our show as well. Great guy. Super inform- informative, well-spoken as well. Um, tell me a little bit about what you guys spoke, and then we'll, we'll kind of go from there. It was more of like just the uh, importance of Jaden Rashada, what he means to coming to the University of Florida, because if you look at it right now and you go on, I guess, any kind of recruiting site, 24-7 sports, on three, there's a, a lot of those out there. You go down the list of quarterbacks right now, the top 10 quarterbacks in the nation are all pretty much committed except for three. You got Dylan Lonergan, who looks like he's going to go to South Carolina. Arch Manning looks like a Texas uh, Georgia lean there. Uh, you got Moore, Dante Moore there. It looks like LSU, Oregon, maybe Texas A&M goes in there too. Who knows? And then you got Jane Rashada. So what happens if you miss on Jane Rashada? Where do you go? You go down the list of quarterbacks. There's not one quarterback that's favoring Florida in the top 250, and a lot of them are already committed. So you miss out on Jaden Rashada. It's boom or bust with that because now you're trying to either go after a guy that's either ranked in the three 400 range you're either trying to flip a guy that's from an already committed from to another college, which could happen because it's only what June, July right now. You could do that, but it, you really don't want to have to take that route. Or you're going to sit there and wait during the season and wait for a quarterback to hop into the portal. That's the only options that you have left on the table if you don't land Jaden Rashada. So basically, me and Connor, we ran down all sorts of avenues that Florida could go. And that's basically the only three avenues you can go. You either flip somebody if you don't land him. You either land them and then you don't have to worry and then you can build your class off that quarterback or you're going to have to, like I said, wait until somebody just hops into the portal. So, I mean, that's that's kind of the situation that Florida's in right now. So that so, – go ahead, Steve. Go, go ahead. Uh, so, so, David, <laughs> let me ask you this. So, so, so right now you have Jalen uh, on the on the kind of the batting circle, right? Mm-hmm. What what if we miss on this kid? I mean, you still have the the transfer from Ohio State. Um, yeah. You know, Anthony Richardson isn't a guarantee to to leave yeah. for the NFL. Is 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 this a, a situation where it's like all the eggs are in this basket for the kid? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, if if you talk to anybody, especially around the NIL or anybody that's a, a guy at on three or any of these other recruiting sites. It, it's really it's Rashad or a bust. Anybody that I've ever ta- uh, talked to, because like I said, the, the the reasons that I described there, you know, obviously having to go to the portal and all that. You could get lucky, and during the year, somebody really valuable and and with a lot of experience might come to the portal. But if you're left, say Anthony Richardson has a good year and he leaves to go to the NFL, you are stuck with Jack Miller. Which, granted, he did not look good in the spring game. Only had 40 snaps over at Ohio State. Comes into a new system with a new coach has zero collegiate snaps, period, whatsoever. And you're you're kind of stuck in a situation where do you start Jack Miller? Do you start, you know, a, a, an incoming freshman? What was his name? Max Johnson, I mean, which actually he had pretty good high school stats. A the three-star quarterback? Yeah, three-star quarterback. I mean, we had luck with three-star quarterbacks before, you know, Kyle Trask, Trask. and all those guys. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, shoot, even Tyler Murphy. He was, he was a decent three-star quarterback, but uh, obviously transferred out. But – You know, you're stuck in a situation where you're going to have to either go young with the quarterback that you got from the last cycle, or you're you're, going to put all your eggs in a basket with Jack Miller, who obviously did not look great in the spring game, but maybe you give him a year. Maybe he learns the system. Maybe he gets more familiar with the wide receivers and tight ends, and maybe he might be better next year, but that's, that's a big lottery ticket to scratch right now. You don't know what's going to go and happen between now and next year. And then you may get lucky. And even to say you don't land Jaden Rashada and Anthony Richardson has a great year, but not great enough to where he thinks he wants to go to the NFL. He thinks maybe he could be picked higher in the draft. But, you know, if you look at all the mock drafts out there, they've got him going first round already. And he hasn't even played, but he hasn't even started but one game. And that was against Georgia. (laughs) Wild. It's crazy. So, you know, you, you either hope that you hold on to Anthony Richardson for one more year. Or, as I said, the scenario before, and that's what Florida's stuck with right now. Now, if you land Jaden Rashado, that's great news. That's a five-star quarterback. That's a guy that's going to attract a lot of wide receivers and, and a lot of tight ends, a lot of offensive guys coming into the class. And then you can build your class from there early and not have to worry about, you know, maybe later, oh, well, why are these kids questioning coming to Florida? Well, they don't have a quarterback. So why would an offensive recruit want to come to a school that doesn't have a quarterback in the class? So you're kind of stuck in a situation where you want to get him now and you want to get him into the class. That way, 
when a season starts and if you have a decent season kids will see it and they'll say well they just signed a five they're going to sign a five-star quarterback maybe i want to come here I sure. think so. We've talked about the importance of obviously getting Rashada because of the recruiting aspect, right? Just it's going to help bring people in. Something yeah. you brought to just to my attention that is even more important is that is the timing, right? Because if we don't get him now, right, and then it puts pushes everything back to where we either have to flip somebody, which is going to be later on, or a portal. That it look, it's going to hurt hurt the recruiting. But again, more so, you're running out of time. You've now lost that time that you could have been getting guys because they don't like you said they don't know what's going on there. And if we do flip somebody or get a portal talk, great. But again, now you've w- wasted six months of not having anybody to recruit with or to to utilize. So it, I, I think we it, the more we talk about it and you bring it up, and I looked at it when I listened to your podcast, I actually have it pulled up right now. You, like you said, the top 40 kids, the quarterbacks, I mean, top 30, most of them are already committed for the most part, right? And again, they're verbally, but they, they can flip. But they're like, I mean, all of them from the top 30, Besides the three that you mentioned, are all committed. And I was like, when I looked at that, I was like, holy crap, we're a little behind the the eight ball here. But again, due to the situation, so two things: one, for Billy to be in this situation to have the, the talks with Jaden Rashada, huge. I think we're, we're we're sleeping on the fact that if we really look at the situation at hand, the fact that Arch is somewhat in the conversation, kind of really, I don't know if it's just more fluff than anything. But we'll get into that. But for the fact that this, I mean, Jaden Rashada to me kind of came out of nowhere. I don't feel like there was really any talks, and all of a sudden it was just like five stars visiting Florida, and now it's like this is the, our Lord and Savior. We better figure this out quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, it's funny too because he came from California, and we haven't had good luck with California kids, especially when they have committed and signed and they get the wrong roommate and then they leave. <laughs> sure, <laughs> so, sure. Uh, so Florida, Florida, Florida gets a little wild. Point. <laughs> Florida gets a little wild. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> So the, the importance of the Jaden Rashada commit, and I've heard I've heard a lot of great, great things behind the scenes. His dad loves the University of Florida, and usually uh, when a parent has that influence on the kid when they want to come to a school, usually most of the time the parent's influence wins out. But then you have situations like the Jacob Copeland situation where his parents want to go to Alabama, some guys from Tennessee. Tennessee. He picks Florida anyway. You got the uh, you know Harold Perkins situation from last year where – one of his family members wanted Florida. He he sticks with LSU. His mama so, did. I thought he was a shoo-in, man. <laughs> I did, yeah, well, I think we all did. And then at the last minute, you see all these crystal balls rolling for LSU, and you're like, what the heck's going on, right? So, I mean, recruiting's pretty wild, man. And it's it, it, the, the recruitment of Jaden Rashada, you're going to hear things from, you know, so-and-so's in this. And so you're going to hear a lot of stuff between now and Saturday. And all I got to tell Florida fans is just buckle up. It's going to be a ride. But if you had to ask me right now, I would pick Rashada to go to the University of Florida. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I, look, I love that. It's we've got what's today the fifteenth. Three days until we find out where where he's picking. And we and you guys talked a little, a little bit too. Um, I heard Connor say on the podcast, your podcast, uh, which also in the link below, we've got about a hundred people in here, which is the first time ever. So. David, looks like you bring out the people, man. We love, we love it. So, whoever new, whoever's new here, thanks for by. We appreciate you guys. Make sure you guys. I haven't been looking at that chat, man. So they might be saying some bad things, man. No, they're blowing up. We'll we'll get to the chat here in a minute because they, they get spicy. They have their own little no, world it, down there. But yeah, this is a whole a whole another uh, podcast, podcast happening right here <laughs> on on the side yeah, <laughs> as exactly. we do our podcast every but week, man. Something Connor mentioned on your cast that I thought was very interesting. I might get the, the numbers wrong, but I'm pretty sure he stayed at uh, was it A and M for like 44 hours, right? And then LSU was like a day and a half. And he spent mm-hmm. the full three days here in Florida, which yeah. to me, that's huge. I mean, you kind of go for 40, 44 hours. I mean, I loved Carl was pretty spot on. He's like 44 hours and 36 minutes. No. <laughs> but like you go and you're kind of out in LSU, you spent a, a day and a half and you're out. And again, he already just went to, he came to Florida just not too long ago. And they came and spent the entire three days here, took the pictures with uh, Hugh Hathcock's Lambo, the blue Lambo that's been just flying through the internet that, that thing I mean, anthony richard took, uh, took a picture with it and it just shot off like a rocket it was like get this thing on the on the field where t- everyone's taking photos with it now <laughs> beautiful yeah. recruiting tactic and, and and also to add to that too i mean from california to florida it's a long travel it's an over two thousand mile travel sure. uh he came the week before he had his official visit and then he comes and stays three more days after his official visit so it you know the kid and the parents are interested in the University of Florida. And if somebody really didn't want to come to the University of Florida, they wouldn't take the time out of their day, the flights, to travel from 2,000 miles back and forth two weeks in a row either. 
So if you got to look at it that way, that's a you know that's a good omen for Florida. Yeah, uh, being into it. And as I said, as of right now, I would pick Florida. Talk to me in three more days to Saturday, and then uh, hopefully my mind doesn't change. <laughs> it, he's crystal balled for Florida right now, which we've seen that crystal yep. ball shatter before. So, uh, <laughs> but we'll yep. keep we'll keep a close eye on to that. Uh, let's go. Go ahead. I said PTSD, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard to get too excited. We, Dave, we got to hop into these comments, man. I mean, they are going through the roof. I'm sure they're all saying hi. I'm sure you've got some people, some fans that have stopped by just to see you and say, hey. So we'll we'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll, we'll settle down the crew for a minute, and then we're going to dive back into some more recruiting talk. That's cool with you, man. Woo. Yeah, that's cool. They are, get, they are getting crazy in here. This is Let's, amazing. We got George in the house, Carson, uh, cute. Zachary Whitfield's back. Three five two sports. What's going on, man? Ricky Gator Game twenty twenty two is here. Uh, let me see what else we got. What else we got? Connor Griffiths, uh, George, 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 George is the man. Um, George is all over. So I've, I've seen him comment on your stuff. The guys all over. Mama's here. What's up, Mama? She missed last week. Brian Carter, uh, Joel's here. Uh, Del Delve Kid Gators Media here. What's going on, Jeremy McGraw? Three thumbs up. Appreciate you, man. Uh, Gators and Braves, you have good taste. Yes, yes, we do. Go Braves. We're going to get into that a little bit. Braves are up 3-0 tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Jacob, what's going on, man? Andrew, Mr. Rick James, he's ready for this. And James Thomas, full house tonight. Thank you all for stopping by and dropping some comments. Keith Coleman, yo, Keith what's Coleman. going on, man? Yo, we see you too, baby. What's up? <laughs> uh, George says Rashad is going to be our quarterback. He's going to beat Miami in 2024. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's funny about 2024 is we play UCF, Miami, and Florida State all one year. Oh, the sweep. Yeah. Somebody get their brooms out. Got to go that, for the sweep, man. That's got to be more common, man. What, what, what's your, I mean, what's your Are, thoughts on the Miami, uh, the, the the duel? Do you feel like that should be brought back to an every year game? Uh, between Miami and Florida? I would love it. I mean, I think, I don't think you could ask any Florida fan that they would not love Miami and Florida playing more often instead of every five years. Um, I, I'm all for it. If that's what they want to do. I mean, now they're talking about these pods and how this is going to work and that's going to work. So you, I mean, you don't know, but uh, as I said, man, uh, to get a Miami matchup, we already get a Florida State matchup. Might as well throw Miami in there, too. It'd be great if we just had a trifecta of Florida State, Miami, uh, you know, Florida. It, it just have that whole trifecta of the Florida schools. And add UCF in there, too, man. I just about to say that. I think UCF, I think, has done a good job of putting their name in that uh, that ring where, like, look, they're they're a reasonable team that they should be considered in there now. So I think they, their little heads on their, their on their high horse because they kind of get to go through a cake schedule and they come beat us in, in the bowl game, which I get it. You guys won, but let's let's not get too carried away, okay? But a come different talk to us. It was one year. Okay. Come talk to us you, in the regular you, season. It, you didn't beat the champions. You beat the people who beat the champions. So you can't uh, – we, we've gone down this path a million times, but – UCF, great, great matchup. Let's let, let's go. I love I it. Uh, Marshall Dupree said Rashada is a Gator. That's his prediction. Um, what else? What well, I just saw another one. Charles Young says, "Is Anthony Richard really going to be good?" David, I'll let you take that away first. What are you, what are you, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think he's going to be the man? Uh, from what I've seen, especially spring game, man, I mean, he had a 75% completion rating through for over 200 yards uh, with without, uh, I would say without a good, I, I wouldn't say a good tight end. I mean, Xander's looked pretty good at tight end, but I mean, all those tight ends were injured that game. Uh, got a lot of young wide receivers on the on the team and he, he looked pretty good for, for the time that he was on the field. And then you go back to last year, you see the LSU game. He averaged, and it was funny, when I ran down the, uh, the the stats just from the LSU game, I think he threw a couple picks that game, but every two, as a, it was around an average of every two minutes and 10 seconds, he scored a touchdown on, I think it was four drives or five drives in a row and scored a <laughs> touchdown, and it only took him two minutes. And then we're sitting there looking at the other quarterback that was starting in front of him, and it took him forever just to score one time. So Just to look comfortable. <laughs> So yeah, anybody that thinks we're going to repeat it like six and six or six and seven, six and six, the, and there it's not going to happen. Not with Anthony Richardson at quarterback, but got to stay healthy now. If he does not stay healthy, then you're in trouble. 